What is going on everyone? My name is Andy. Welcome back to another FPL video. In this one, it's my team selection for game week 11. So I'm going to run you through how the team is looking, thoughts on what transfer to make this week, and how that sets my team up for the long term, thoughts around Saka, players like that as well. And I'll run you through how I did in game week 10, which this week I'm not so worried about because I finally had a good week. If you enjoyed the video, make sure to give it a like, hit that subscribe button if you haven't done so already. Let's get into it. So let's start off how I did in game week 10. And it was easily my best game week of the season. I think it's the first time I've had a game week rank so far this year under a million. So my game week rank was 333k. That was off the back of 62 points. And that took me from 2.9 million to the nosebleed heights of just inside the top 1.8 million. So obviously that's still a pretty poor overall rank generally. But to go from 2.9 after that disastrous triple captain week for me up to 1.8 million that's pretty nice if i could do that a couple more times then all of a sudden the season looks a lot different so yeah i think that 333k yeah easily the highest game week rank i've had the previous highest was 1.3 million and my current rank of 1.78 million is actually my second highest rank of the season i got up to 1.3 million in game week five and then things just basically went downhill after I wildcarded in game week six and Haaland just forgot how to score. So although it's not a great position to be in, it's the second best position I've been in all season. So hopefully from here, things will get better. But I've said that about nine times this season. So we'll see how things go. In terms of where the points came from, I actually only had three players that returned. That is it. I mean, Cole Palmer, to be fair, got a bonus point. You could maybe count that as a return, but three points is not enough to warrant calling it that, in my opinion. So Fernandez, 10 points. The penalty against Chelsea and the three bonus. Salah captain, 18 points. And then Solanke, 16 points. Every other one of my 11 players blank. So it just goes to show that sometimes it's about the specific players that return. And it also happened to be in a week where Harlan got nothing, Foden got nothing, neither did Saka. And obviously I took out Son and he got an assist, but he went off before the 60th minute. So it was just one of those weeks where everything went my way. And hopefully there's more of them going forward. Um, in terms of the transfers I made, it was Haaland and Semenyo out for Salah and Raul Jimenez. And obviously Semenyo scored. Rogers also got a nine-pointer on my bench. But overall, because I captained Salah... I was better off making that move because if I kept Haaland, I would have captained him and obviously he blanked. And then last minute, I did the Son to Palmer move. I think that was just because I've been... Like, Palmer has been smashing me so much this season. I was just kind of sick of it. And also, I was a little bit worried about Son's minutes. Now, straight after the deadline, I regretted making that move. And I think it was probably a bad move. I think at my rank, I should have kept the differential premium midfielder in Son, who has Ipswich at home in game week 11 rather than kind of i don't know going for the player to kind of defend a little bit because it was it was quite nice going into sunday knowing that palmer couldn't absolutely damage my rank again but i think it was a bad move but i was a little bit more worried about son's minutes than everyone else and that ended up being true he he came off in the 55th minute and we'll see what he gets against it which maybe i've got it completely wrong and he'll play 80 plus but i'm not sure he will and if i had son It'd be nice to have that differential for Ipswich at home in game week 11, but I'm not sure I'd be prepared to captain him, which would tell me that I'm not super confident in his minutes. So I think it was a bad move. I accept that, but I've got Palmer. I definitely want him from game week 12 onwards. It's just a shame that he's flagged at the moment. And I'll talk about that when I go through the game week 11 team. Elsewhere, another clean sheet gone for Arsenal. Newcastle really only had that one chance. They didn't trouble Newcastle. Uh, sorry, they didn't trouble Arsenal that much. But still, not great. Raya, three points. Gabriel, two. Lewis came off the bench for a one-pointer. Trent conceded to only two points. In Burmo, three. Raul Jimenez, two. And Calvert-Lewin, two, because that guy just never returned. So it, it looks quite bad on paper that eight out of 11 have blanked. But it was a great week. 62 points, up to the lofty heights of just inside the top two million. Let's see if we can make it better from here. So going into game week 11, I've only got one free transfer, but I do have 1.4 million in the bank. And that Haaland to Salah move has freed up a little bit of cash. So there are potential avenues to make some upgrades throughout my team. In terms of the defense, one decision to be made is which goalkeeper to play. So at the moment, I've got double Arsenal defense in Raya and Gabriel, but Chelsea away is going to be a difficult fixture. Now, if Cole Palmer was to be ruled out for that game, then I'd probably... Still expect Chelsea to score, but not be quite such a 
tough team for Arsenal. And I think despite the lack of clean sheets for Arsenal, they conceded again in the Champions League last night. I think that defence is still one of the best in the league. So if Palmer's out, I think I'd probably be pretty tempted just to play Raya. But if Palmer's going to play, and I've got him in my team, I could just play Fabianski instead against Everton at home. I mean, on paper, Everton at home is a much better fixture. The problem is the West Ham defence is just terrible. It's so open under Lopetegui, and I don't think that necessarily gets better even against a team like Everton. Although, as a long-term Calvert-Lewin owner, I know that Everton struggle to score goals at times. So right now I've got Raya in the eleven, but by the deadline I might actually switch that to Fabianski depending on what news we get over the next couple of days. In terms of the defence, I'm keeping Gabriel. I think I've come this far with double Arsenal defence off the back of wildcard six. There's no reason to sell Raya or Gabriel because the fixtures from 12 onwards get pretty good. The only slight concern is Declan Rice missed the match last night in the Champions League through an injury. Hopefully it's just a minor thing and he's back this weekend. Because if he was missing out from that Arsenal midfield, that probably would make them a little bit more open. I don't think it would put me off holding Arsenal defence for a little bit longer. But from an FPL point of view, I would definitely prefer if Declan Rice was in that team. So we'll see what Arteta says on Friday. Either way, Ray and Gabriel not being sold. It's just a case of whether I play Fabianski instead. I think for Trent Alexander-Arnold, the general narrative in the community right now is he's not worth the money. And I do get that, right? He's not got a huge amount of attack and return so far this season. He is playing a more withdrawn role. He's more defensive than attacking in that slot team. But it does mean the Liverpool defence is very good this season. And I think clean sheets are coming for them. And yes, I'm, I'm paying a premium for it over a Van Dijk or a Canate. But Trent's already in my team. So it's a different decision than if I was wildcarding this week. I think anyone that wants a Liverpool defender on wildcard this week or next... We'll probably just go for Canate, and that's fine. But it's probably not worth me right now using a transfer to get rid of Trent. And Villa at home is not an easy fixture. Villa have got lots of good attackers, but they are coming off the back of a midweek game and potentially maybe a bit of fatigue going into that Liverpool match. I mean, Liverpool have played midweek as well, but they're way more used to having to do that, right? Villa in the Champions League is a completely new thing for them. So I think that's an okay fixture. And more to the point... Trent's got Southampton away in game week 12, so I want to keep him for that fixture because that looks excellent on paper. And it's getting to the point where Trent's almost like a bit of a differential because people are getting a little bit frustrated with the amount he costs. So he's definitely staying for now. My other three defenders are Greaves, Fripps, which Spurs away, he's injured at the moment anyway. Rico Lewis against Brighton away, who's currently on the bench. And then Pinnock is in my 11 for Brentford against Bournemouth at home. Now, I don't expect... Pinnock to get a clean sheet in pretty much any match, let alone against that Bournemouth attack, because I think it's pretty decent. The problem with Rico Lewis is the Man City defence also looks fairly open at the moment. Brighton attack is decent, and I'm not even sure Rico Lewis is going to start. I think he played midweek. I think there's every chance that Kyle Walker will come in up against Matoma for Brighton. So I don't think Lewis will play. Greaves is injured, so Pinnock has to be in the 11. And although he's probably not going to keep a clean sheet, he does have a bit of goal threat. He's already scored twice this season. I could make a defender transfer. And if I was to move any of them on, it probably would be Rico Lewis, just because he's more expensive than Pinnock and Greaves, so it gives me a bit more money to spend. And I'm not sure he's going to start much over the next few weeks. The next time that I'd really want to play Rico Lewis is probably game week 14 against Forrest at home. Like, Brighton away, Spurs at home, Liverpool away are just not good fixtures. Like, even after that, I think Man United score against City in 16. I could see Villa away in 17 scoring. The fixtures from 18 onwards get really good. Who knows how many minutes he'll be getting at that point. And if he is a genuinely great option still at that stage, I can always look to bring him back in. So I, I'm quite keen to sell Rico Lewis at some point. The only problem is I'm very likely to make an attacking change this week. So if I want to make a defender change as well... I've got to take a hit. And I'm not sure there's any defenders that are worth it. And I think my main my main thinking at the moment, I'm not against taking a hit, but it's just to play Pinnock for the next three weeks. Like, it's not ideal, but that one spot in my team is probably not going to make or break my overall rank over the next few weeks. And after 11, it's Everton away. And look, again, I don't expect Brentford to necessarily get a clean sheet. But if that Everton attack isn't quite up for it that day... Who knows? And then it's Leicester at home in 13. So I don't think it's necessarily the end of the world to have to play Pinnock in the 
but basically the strategy would be to not take a hit and to potentially roll a transfer in game week 12 rather than using it on a 4.5 million defender. Now, if I was to take the hit for Rico Lewis, I'd have 5.4 million to spend. So I couldn't get to Poro. I can maybe go for Dallow or Delict at Man United, who've got good fixtures over the next three. You're not quite sure how Amarim is going to set up when he comes in. Or the player that lots of people want to go for right now is Ain't Nuri. I think he's still great for 4.7. I love the fact he's got Southampton at home. But I'm, I, I've got a bad feeling about what... Not, not a bad feeling, but I just... The Wolves' defence has not been great. Now, it's partially because of the fixtures, but also probably partially that that Wolves' defence is probably just not that great. And so after Southampton at home, I'm not sure how many clean sheets there are until potentially Ipswich are home in 16. Like Fulham away, I would see Fulham scoring. Bournemouth at home is tough, as I've just mentioned with Pinnock. Everton away and West Ham away, maybe. But who knows if Lopetegui is even manager by that point. And I think West Ham have got attackers that could hurt you, especially like a Wolves defence. So, Aitner is the kind of player that I hate not owning because everyone on Twitter has him. And you know when he scores, it's going to be everywhere. But I think if I can just get away with not having him for Southampton, after that, it's probably going to be a little bit easier to get through game weeks without worrying about him quite so much. Like, he has been super attacking this year, and I think he is probably one of the best cheap defenders to bring in in game week 11. But I don't know if I should be so concerned about him that I need to take a hit. And also, he's only one yellow card away from suspension, so he might get that against Southampton and miss game week 12. Anyway, it seems unlikely that he's going to get through 19 matches, and at some point he's going to miss a game. Imagine if it's like Ipswich or home. So I don't think I'm going to take a hit. I think I'm just going to play Pinnock. If I had 0.1 million more... Maybe I would take a hit for Poro, but even in that situation, Romero and Van de Ven are both out. So who knows? Ipswich might score in this game, and Poro's not had a huge amount of attack in return. So at certain points throughout a season, you're not going to have the perfect squad you want. You've got to rely on the players you've got. I think I'm just going to put my faith in Pinnock and hope that playing him is better than taking a hit at least in game week 11. In future weeks, I might have a spare transfer for a defender, but right now, that is probably not the case. So in midfield, I think I've got to start with Cole Palmer, who's currently yellow flagged and a doubt going into that Arsenal game. Now, anytime I tweet about Palmer potentially being a doubt, I met with a lot of responses that say, he's definitely going to start, this is nothing to worry about, 100%, he'll be in that 11 against Arsenal. And I agree, that right now, that is more likely that he plays than is completely out, but he hasn't trained since that Man United game. Now, I saw one journalist say that on Monday it was a rest day, so that's not really anything to be concerned about. But Moreska held a press conference on Wednesday ahead of the European game and said that he hadn't trained on Tuesday. They would see if he could train on Wednesday. And then there was live footage of Chelsea training and Palmer was nowhere to be seen. Now, maybe he's doing individual training or something like that. He's obviously not in the European squad. But it is a little bit of a concern that he hasn't trained since that United game. The good news is the Chelsea-Arsenal game is the last match of the game week on Sunday. So he's got Saturday as well to get himself ready. And it's such a big game. I agree with most people. It's more likely that he plays. But I think there is potential that he could miss out, right? So we've got to think about the eventuality that he's not going to be available for this game. What do we do? It's also worth quickly noting that the England squad for the international break will be announced today. If Palmer's in that, there's probably nothing to worry about. I don't think it's a long-term issue because if it was, I think we would have heard about it by now. So for me, if he does miss out for game week 12, sorry, game week 11, I'm probably going to keep him because from 12 onwards, he's such a good option. And I just don't want to use a transfer to sell him to Son or Saka and then have to get him back in. I'm just not sure it's worth using two transfers. That spot has been a bit of a... I don't know. It's been frustrating for me because I had Saka. I sold him to Son. And to be fair, that week, Son went and got his goal. But then the following week, I didn't sell Son to Palmer, and Palmer did really well. And then the week after that, I do get Palmer, and he blanks, and now he's a doubt. So that spot has not been great for me. But again, a bit like, you know, talking about trusting Pinnock in my defense. At some point, I've got to hold on to players for the long term. I think unless Cole Palmer was to be ruled out for, like, a couple of months, you know, Leicester away in 12, he's potentially going to be my captain that week if I don't want to go for Salah. Villa at home, Southampton away, Spurs away, Brentford home. It's just a really great fixture run, right? We've been talking about the Chelsea fixture uh, fixture swing in game week 12 for a long time. So 
hopefully he's fine. If not, I'm probably just going to keep him and play Morgan Rogers against Liverpool away, which is not great. But I just want Palmer from 12 onwards. If I was going to sell him, I guess if I'm setting myself up to go straight back after the break, I'd probably go for Son because it's Ipswich at home. Otherwise, I'd go Palmer to Saka. And then I would do Bruno to Palmer later on, like a few game weeks time. I don't really want to use all these additional transfers when I've already got Palmer and I know I want him from 12 onwards. So he is a doubt. I don't think it's 100% likely that he starts, although he probably will. I'm not going to sell him either way, I don't think. That's my that's my current thoughts anyway. Bruno Fernandes definitely staying, uh, not just because he got a goal last week, but it's Leicester at home. And even though long-term Saka is a better option, he's more expensive. I don't have the transfers to get there right now. And... Fernandez against Leicester at home is probably competitive up against Saka against Chelsea away. So I'm not too worried about him. I think there's a few players in my squad right now where I'm happy to hold, but I'm also happy to sell. I think Trent is one of those where at the moment I've got him happy days, but if I need money at some point, I'll get rid of him for a cheaper defender. And it's very similar with Bruno. Like Leicester at home, good. Ipswich away, good. Everton at home is more than fine. If I have to keep him right up until game week 14, then I will. And at that point, I could sell him on for Saka if I can free up money elsewhere. But I'm not sitting here thinking, I've got to get rid of Bruno. He has to go, right, at all costs. It's just not a case like that with him. And also, I've said this in other videos this week, if I get to 14 and there's other issues in my squad, I'll just keep Bruno. Arsenal away in 14 and Man City away in 16 is not great. But there's midweek fixtures. He's going to play all these games. He's never injured. Who knows? Amarin might get Man United playing really well. He could just be worth holding on to at 8.2 million. He could be value because despite what you think about him, he's pretty consistent. Like last year, 19 returns. That's pretty much one like every other game. He's more than capable of doing that over the rest of the season. So that that's I'm not keeping Fernandez for the season, right? I know people are still really worried about the fact he's in my team, but it's Leicester at home, Ipswich away. There's no need to be concerned. And it's a similar situation with in Burma, there's already talk starting to go around about the possibility of selling him from like 14, 15 onwards. I'm going to worry about it when that point comes because if I've got other injuries and suspensions to deal with, in Burma is never going to be someone that I want to force out of my team. And I've also got a lot of value tied up in him. Like many people, I got in him quite early. So I bought him for 7.1. He's now 7.9. So it's 0.4 million to buy him back. Now, if the fixtures are that bad where we think the returns are going to slow down, he will start getting sold by people. So his price will come down a little bit. So it won't necessarily be 0.4 million you've got to spend to buy him back. But if he keeps getting the odd return here or there, people are not going to be that quick to sell him. I think I'm more worried about 19 to 22, which is Arsenal at home, City at home and Liverpool at home in the space of four game weeks. Before that, I'm not as worried as other people. Like Villa away, Newcastle at home, Chelsea away, Forest at home. It could be better, but it's not awful for a player that's absolutely nailed on penalties. I think it's fine for the price we got him at. So he's staying, and then Salah I just bought in, so he's going nowhere, and he's going to be my captain this week. There's no one else I'm even really remotely considering. Like I've got Solanke against Ipswich at home. I've got Fernandez against Leicester at home. I just don't think they're better than Salah right now. He's already on. Let me just double-check what it is. At the moment it's it's a ridiculous score already it's 90 yeah 93 points already so we're 10 game weeks in he's already close to the 100 point mark it looks like he's going to be another season where he hits 200 plus i think he's got the most points per game so far this season as well like 9.3 that will probably come down like harlan's on 7.7 .7 for example but it's just hard to see salon not returning at the moment and i don't think playing villa at home right now is a, is a bad like, it's not an easy fixture, but I don't see it as a bad one either. Uh, and I think Salah's just got so much, so many routes to points, like penalties, obviously goal threat, but he's also so creative these days. And that's also why he's so good for bonus. I think that's playing a part. Like, one return, you know, against Brighton, he's picking up two bonus. One return against Arsenal, he gets three bonus. Two returns against Chelsea, two bonus. Like, he's already on 18 bonus points in 10 game weeks. So, he's just great. He's going to be my captain. I think Fernandez and Solanke are somewhat competitive this week but not anywhere near if i say they're not anywhere near close enough that's not really competitive is it i'm gonna captain salah 
And then up front, I've got Raul Jimenez against Palace away, Solanke against Ipswich at home, and Calvert-Lewin against West Ham away. Now, I probably don't need to spend a huge amount of time telling you why I'm keeping Solanke this week. Ipswich at home is more than enough reason. Even if he'd blanked against Aston Villa and had no shots, I'd still be keeping him this week. In terms of a long-term pick, I see him similar to Fernandes and Trent in my squad, that if I have to sell him at some point to free up funds, then I'm happy to do it. But I'm not sitting here thinking there's a major rush to have to sell Solanke. And as I discussed with Son recently, I actually think the Spurs fixtures are a little bit better than people are giving them credit for. Now, don't get me wrong. Even though it's probably not a bad time to play Man City right now, on paper, that's still an awful fixture in game week 12. But after that, Fulham at home is pretty good. I think Fulham have been decent this season, but that Spurs attack is a problem for any defense. So I like Solanke against Fulham. I think Bournemouth away in 14 and Chelsea at home in 15 are fixtures, I would say, are not easy, but not terrible either. Like if I have to play Solanke in both of those, it's not a problem. And then Southampton away in 16 is pretty decent. And people keep mentioning the the Spurs away record. I get that. But those kind of things, that those records are there to be broken, right? Solanke is more than fine against Southampton away. I'm not expecting anything against City anyway. And the only other away game from now until 16 is Bournemouth and I think Spurs are more than capable of scoring in a fixture like that so I don't mind him as a longer term hold and also I'm going to sound like a broken record over the next few game weeks but I'm going to keep mentioning it game week 14 is a midweek fixture so for Spurs 13 to 15 it's Sunday Thursday Sunday turnaround very similar to their European matches right so so weekend Thursday game in Europe and then weekend again Solanke will probably start all of those. There's going to be other players that people are concerned about. I'm not sure that's the case with Solanke, especially when Richardson is out at the moment. And Solanke is clearly first choice number nine anyway. I don't think it matters if he goes the old game without scoring. Ange Postacoglu is not going to suddenly change that. And then when you get to game week 17, okay, it's Liverpool at home, Forest away, which is not great. Then it's Wolves at home, Newcastle at home. But three of those four games are at home. And again, it's over Christmas. Congested fixture schedule. Solanke could easily start all of those games if he remains fit. So, you know, Isaac, good option. Watkins, good option. They're more expensive. Jackson's on four yellow cards. I think I'm okay with Solanke. I think there probably will be one or two cheap forwards that outscore him over this period, but I'm not sure it's obvious exactly who they will be. So Solanke's pretty good. That's a, that's a very long-winded way of saying I'm keeping him this week. Um, with Raul Jimenez... I'm more than happy that he's in my team, but there is a slight regret about buying him last week because I was so fixated on buying Cunha and then I went for Raul Jimenez instead because I felt like Brentford at home was a better fixture. Now, I will say there is a lot of hindsight with that thinking. If Jimenez had scored, I would not be sitting here saying I regret it. The only reason it's slightly playing on my mind is if I'd gone for Cunha last week, I don't think I'd be sitting here looking to buy Raul Jimenez. Does that make sense? So I think it was a good move last week, and I'm okay with him still in my team. But there's a little bit of regret because I don't think I'd be buying him this week. But I will say, massive hindsight with that take, and he's still pretty good value, and I think the Fulham attack is decent. So I'm hoping against Palace away, and then Wolves at home in game week 12, there's good returns. I'm not worried about playing him against Spurs. Brighton at home's okay. And then in 15 and 16, when he's got Arsenal at home and Liverpool away, um, Rodgers has got Southampton at home and Forest away. So it's, it's really not the end of the world. And if Raul Jimenez remains first choice, which I think he will, given how he's playing at the moment, the fixtures from kind of 17 onwards are great. Now, he might not start all these games. Meniz could play instead. But I'm kind of okay with him in my team. I just don't think I would necessarily be buying him this week. Calvert-Lewin, he's got to go, hasn't he? Um, there is part of me that looks at that squad and thinks... If if Trent was injured, for example, I'd probably make a defender transfer, and I'm not sure I would take a hit to remove Calvert-Lewin. Obviously, there's been no returns, and I'm not expecting that to change moving forward. And I'm not saying he's a good pick or anything like that. Please listen to what I'm saying. But if he starts that game against West Ham, and he's going to get like 70 minutes plus, he's okay to hold for one more week and make a different forward change next week. Like, if I'd gone for Cunha last week, I think I'd be talking myself into holding Calvert-Lewin this week and then maybe getting a Brighton forward instead from game week 12. It's not great to have Calvert-Lewin in my team for one more week, but one more week is not going to be the make or break for my season. But because I didn't buy Cunha last week, 
I'm probably just going to get him this week. I was looking at my suggested transfers uh, on Fantasy Football Hub, and the recommendation is to roll. And I get it, because going over an international break into game week 12 with two free transfers would be nice. By the way, if you want to check your suggested transfers, I'll leave a link in the description below. Seven-day free trial, 30% off at the moment. Um, but I'm just not sure I can... I've got a transfer. I'm not sure I can sit there and look at Calvert-Lewin in my team any longer. So I think my move is Calvert-Lewin to Cunha. There's, this is going to turn into a bit of a ramble now, just a heads up. I think Cunha's a good pick. Right? Simple as that. I love the fixtures. Between now and 17, they get to play all three of the newly promoted sides. And then the other fixtures are Fulham away, Bournemouth for home, Everton away, West Ham away. Not perfect fixtures, but definitely not terrible. And I like the fact that he always plays. He almost always gets 90 minutes. If Sarabi is not on the pitch, he'll probably take penalties. He takes some set pieces as well. All round, he is just a good pick. And I'm really not trying to say otherwise. But there's also part of me that thinks he's not the out and out number nine in that Wolves team. And he's 6.7 million. It just doesn't feel that cheap anymore. Like He's only 0.4 million off a Liverpool forward. And I get it. I can't buy Gapo or Nunez because there's rotation concerns and stuff like that long term. And I'm happy to buy... Like I, I said age, like I said on Wildcard 6, I'd much rather have him Burmo than Diaz, etc. So it's not like I'm afraid to buy players that aren't from the top teams. Like You've got to do that with the way prices are this season. There's just like a gut feeling... It tells me Cunha's a bit expensive at 6.7, and at some point in the future, it might impact my moves. But at the same time, I've got Southampton right in front of me. And I love the fact that he's going to play all these matches, you know, over this fixture congested period. I am a little bit worried that if Wolves lose to Southampton, that O'Neill might get sacked, and then who knows what that will look like moving forward with a new manager. But I think whoever comes in, Cunha is in that team, right? There's no. There's no real chance of him coming out he's just too good to be removed and you see how many times he's played the full game so i think i've got to buy Cunha. There, there is a little part of me that just thinks is it definitely the right call like i don't see me selling fernandez or trent to free up money to go for like an Isaac in this spot instead i would need two transfers to do that i don't know some people will say i'm overthinking i like to think that i'm just thinking about it Maybe I am just looking for reasons not to do it, but I think that will be my move, and that will leave me with 0.6 million in the bank. So that that stops me from doing Lewis to Paro for a hit. So I'm probably just going to play Pinnock, and then save that 0.6 million for a future game week. It would be nice to roll into game week 12, but because I've already got Palmer, if he's going to be available for that game, I think a lot of people saving transfers are to bring in Arsenal players. Well, I've already got two, or to bring in Palmer, and I've already got him. And obviously, you can just get injuries over an international break, and you might need a bunch of moves for those. But in theory, I could maybe roll in game week 12. Like, if you look at my team in the My Team tool, if I do Calvert Lewin out for Cunha and just save that, um, if I go to game week 12, I've got Ray and Gabriel against Forrest at home, Trent against Southampton away, and Pinnock against Everton away, which. It's not amazing, right? But Pinnock's like the only issue in my team, right? It's not a major problem. Salah against Southampton away, Palmer against Leicester away, and Burma against Everton away, and Fernandez against Ipswich away. Solanke against City away is not great, but if I really was worried about that, I could play Rodgers against Palace at home instead. And then Jimenez is against Wolves at home, and Cunha's against Fulham away. So I could just roll game week 12. I wouldn't have Saka, but I've got Fernandez against Ipswich away instead. And just quickly on Saka, I, I I want him, right? And again, please listen to what I'm saying. I think he's better than Fernandes. Of course he is going forward, especially from 12 onwards. But I don't feel a pressure to buy him because I don't really see too many weeks where I would captain him. You look at those fixtures, and I'm not going to go through every single game week, but basically, in most weeks, Palmer and Salah are just as good, if not slightly better, than Saka for captaincy. And even game week 18, where Arsenal play Ipswich at home, that's a long way away. I can more than work my team to get him in at that point. But also that same week, Salah's got Leicester at home. Palmer's got Fulham at home. So it's not even a massive concern. So I want Saka at some point, but I don't feel like I've got to have him by game week 12. If you have him in your team by game week 12, happy days, you're ahead of the curve. I don't think it's a problem. And I think that applies to game week 13 as well. Like, again, you look at my team. That's the week Pinnock's got Leicester at home. 
I'm always happy to play Trent if I have to sell him that week, fine. But if I've got to play Fernandes against Everton at home, that's more than okay. And then Cunha's got Bournemouth at home, Raul Jimenez is Spurs away, Solanke's Fulham at home. Okay, Salah's playing against City, but he's a long-term hold. And I'm not too worried about that because that means Haaland owners have got Liverpool away, which is not easy either. And I'll just captain Palmer against Villa at home. Like having Saka against West Ham away, it's not like he'll do good in that game because West Ham are terrible, but it's not a major concern that I don't own him. And that and look, game week 13, if I've got two free transfers, might be the week that I do Fernandez to Saka and then Trent to a 5 million or below defender. So that's what I can do. So let me just do that quickly. i would put Saka in here and then Trent out. I've got 5.7 million in the bank. So yeah, <laughs> I mean, everyone's looking at this thinking, just buy Cunha. What the hell are you talking about? I get that, right? I probably will. I just don't like the idea of not rolling into an international break. But I also don't think it's going to massively impact my team. And the only thing I really feel like I'm going to miss out on from 12 onwards is a Brighton attacker, potentially, because their fixtures are so good. But the Southampton game is not till game week 13 anyway. And also, like, do I buy João Pedro? Do I buy, buy Welbeck? Long term, when they're all fit... Who gets the most minutes? I don't think I need to worry about it. So I'm probably going to do... That's a super long video to basically say I'm doing Calvert-Lewin to Cunha. I'm happy with everyone else. I'm probably not going to take a hit for Rico Lewis just to not play Pinnock. And I'm going to go into the international break with a Game Week 12 team that looks pretty good. That hopefully I'll be able to roll. Thank you very much for watching. If you've enjoyed that, make sure to give it a like and hit that subscribe button. Rate five stars if you're listening on podcast. Check out Fantasy Football Hub using the links in the description below. Like I said, seven-day free trial at the moment and 30 off i will catch you tomorrow for final thoughts thank you very much for watching